Well, hello and welcome to the PMQ Live Update for Tuesday, October 13th. Sorry about that. Still getting used to some new formats. Uh, I'm excited about today because we're going to be talking about a very um, unique style of pizza. I don't want to say unique, but uh, a style of pizza that a lot of people like. And it's very hard to master. But fortunately for us, we have one of the masters here to kind of give us all the information that we're going to need. Uh, Mr. Massimo Saeva of the Roman Pizza Academy down in Miami, Florida, and soon to be international all over the place. But uh, Massimo, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Brian. It's a great pleasure. How are you? I'm I'm good. I'm excited. Like I said, I'm excited. And this is one of those things we talked the other day, and you said, "Don't tell me the questions ahead of time." So uh, <laughs> That's he easy. works better under the. He works better under pressure. So what we're going to do is uh, I'm, I, I would like you to kind of introduce yourself in a, in a couple minutes about who you are and what you do, and then um, we're going to jump right into it. So take it away, brother. So I am Massimiliano Sayeva. I'm Italian, 47 years old. I'm a lead instructor of the Roman Pizza Academy here in Miami. And in the next future, we're going to open in Europe to the second location of Roman Pizza Academy. So we're going to stay closer to the guys that want to learn more about my technique, our technique of the Roman Pizza Academy. So I'm going to teach in Europe too, in Italy, Spain, all Europe, and Russia too, actually. So now uh, I'm staying here for the next month in November, giving more classes here in Miami. And uh, so you can, uh, of course, come in Miami and take in class, or I can come to your city and uh, make a startup to your pizza place without problem. Oh, you, you do house calls. I did not know that. That's breaking news house right calls. now. Oh, I have opened so many pizza places in USA. You have no idea. Mexico, too. Latin America. Okay. Everywhere. <laughs> well, it's nice to hear that you guys are kind of getting out there. And I, I think you mentioned that you were um, heading over there in November to yeah. get the, the one in uh, Spain and uh, open up or Italy. But then you'll be teaching at all three, Miami, Italy, and Spain over the years. So however your time is going to be broken up. Who knows? But you will be here teaching classes. I'm going to be here always. Not only classes for the Expo, too. So I'm going to stay in the Las Vegas, the okay. uh, city, or Boston if they're going to change the location. And Chicago, of mm -hmm. course, for the NRA. Uh, it's going to be nice, as always. Okay, great. Well, and, and that's not to say that you're the only one at the academy who can teach. You are just the lead instructor, but you've trained yeah. your other instructor as well. So, yeah. All right. Well, uh, let's kind of jump right into this. And I did want to let everybody know that you can ask your questions here live of uh, Massimo. Just put them in the Facebook comments and we will see them and we'll get them up there and he can answer them live. He seems to thrive on that spontaneity. So just chuck them out there. But uh, first question I get, uh, yeah. what is Roman style? Huh, that's a very nice question. So Roman style uh, perhaps was born perhaps because never you can know the, the the truth about something, but uh, in the 1900 was uh, was born in Italy the first Roman pizza that was like a pizza la pala, so always pizza romana, and that was in the small town that usually they used to have like a wood oven, and to try to test the temperature of the, the oven, they used to bake the dough like the pala. And that was the first uh, Roman pizza that was born uh, in Italy. So let's say that the Roman pizza is like 120 years old. That pizza was uh, heavy. It wasn't like the new pizza that uh, you everybody knows today. Only in the 1980 was already a fermented uh, dough. It was uh, lighter and easy to digest. So the goal of the Roman style pizza is uh, to make a very light product and uh, super easy to digest so people can eat more and more and more without feel the you know the exploding feeling so it's, it's, it's a very nice product so for me it's the ultimate product where you can go over the 80 percent fermentation you can go with a super long fermentation like 72 to 144 hours without problem now the problem is the only problem is that uh, to do a long fermentation direct you have to control time and temperature so that's my goal that's my my class where i teach how to control time and temperature and to reach that kind of structure that i really love and that i like to teach to my students okay well i, I like how you're saying that it was kind of a uh, just there was a test pie that kind of originated this whole style that's just correct. to test the temperature of the oven and that's correct um 
before, that's great. I mean, we already the bread. What's that? Before, yeah. The, you know, the people who was baking the bread was testing the, the storm of the oven. So that was the first Romana. Power. All right. Well, um, now I do have a first question, and I'm going to just shoot this one out there. It's from Jim Schuster, and I think this is actually kind of a broader question. But yeah. um, uh, what is one thing that people are doing wrong when making pizza in a pizzeria? So maybe let's focus it towards what is one thing people are doing wrong making Roman style in a pizzeria? Or if you have a general thing that you think people are doing wrong while making pizza, you can let us know. But what's so, that one thing that people are doing wrong that maybe they don't know they're doing wrong? I mean, for me, is uh, it's always the same mistake, actually. The secret of the kitchen, the secret of baking something is always the same, uh, let's say, secret. No, So it's a temperature and time. If you are not able to control the life of your dough and then after that you are able to control the time the, the time and temperature of your dough like a bulk fermentation or just the life of your dough bowl, you have to be able to control the oven right so that's another yeah. temperature and more time that you have to control not only that we have to control the time and temperature of the mixer so always is all is always the same two ingredients secret ingredients <laughs> which are time and temperature so mixer both fermentation double fermentation the oven is always the same time and temperature so that's the real secret if you are able to control everything about your oven the mixer and then of course the dough it's easy yeah now, what's the temperature right <laughs> so that's the yeah problem. what when I like how you say that, I mean, it's that those are the two answers for everything across the board. Like you said, mixing, oh, fermentation, oven, oh, everything. So flour. The flour is white and the dough is always, let's say, the same, but change, of course, the fermentation. So to change and to make a long fermentation, we need special flours. Okay, so more protein, more W, and that's the way we can make something more light, and easy to digest. So we cannot okay. pretend to make a long fermentation with a 240W. That's going to be impossible. So for that reason, we need special flour. Okay. Well, I do have questions about flour later. Since you didn't want to know them, you got to wait. Uh, I'm just saying, this is my show, Massimo. This is my show. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Jim, thank you for that question. That was actually a, a really good question uh, yeah, that he was able to riff on for a while. So, uh, again, I want to encourage everybody else to ask questions here. Um, so uh, let's, you did mention about uh, just one of those factors, uh, your ovens. Uh, another question that I had is, you know, what type of ovens, what is the one that you would recommend and what are the ones, can you make Roman style in any type of oven, a conveyor oven versus a brick versus wood fired? What's okay. the best one and if can you make them in others? So let's say that a professional can bake with everything, okay? I mean, you can bake uh, with a lighter if you want. You have a lighter, you can bake it. <laughs> but nobody is a professional. So the idea is that you need something that make your work easier and your product perfect every single time. Now, now my question is, why people want to use a gas oven when today we have the electricity, we have the power, and we can control with the computer all the temperature of the top and the bottom of, the, of your oven. So again, we have technology today. People can think that perhaps a smart oven is uh, more expensive than uh, a gas oven. It's not like that. It's much cheaper than a gas oven. So new technology is cheaper than the, the old one, like a mixer too. The mixer, the new mixer, spiral mixer to speed, for example, you can make everything you want. You can make New York style, you can make Neapolitan, you can make Roma, you can make bread with just one oven. So I recommend to buy a spiral mixer to speed than a planetary mixer, for example. And then I recommend to buy an electric oven, new technology, so smart oven, so you can have only one oven and you can make three different products. We just one over. Again, if we talk about conveyor, it's the same. We have the new technology of conve conveyor that today, I mean, you can make everything. I made Roma style, I made uh, New York style, 
I made the pizza la pala with the conveyor over Moretti. So again, you can control top, bottom, temperature, timing. So it's easier. It's like to work with a cell phone. Everybody can bake today. <laughs> Uh, well, that, uh, that's great. And you actually kind of touch on another question that I did have, and I'll ask again later. But I want to thank everybody for you know putting in your comments here. Um, and it's I'm going to get to these first before I have my other questions because I fully anticipate having Massimo on again because I know you guys want to know everything he knows. But um, Matthew made um, – we actually talked about this a little bit earlier today before we even started this is Matthew May wants to know, do you think that Detroit is stealing the limelight from the Roman style? Now, why, why not? It's not like that. I mean, are two different thoughts. <laughs> I mean, is a yeah. all type of pizza can be the top. You know, for me, there is not uh, the number one or number two or number three. For me, it's just uh, the pizza make people happy. So if people like Detroit, I'm happy with that. If people like the Roma style, I'm more happy, of course. But for me, it's the same. <laughs> <laughs> my ultimate goal is to make people happy. So doesn't matter if it's a Detroit, New York, or Roman. It's always pizza. It's always white art. And that's our goal, to teach the white art. So why not? Well, no, and I like how you said that, because a lot of people always ask me. I get to travel and eat all these great different styles. And they're like, what's your favorite? And I said, well, it's like asking no me what my favorite child is. They're different, and they're good. all good for different reasons. So there is not yeah, I don't think it's – yeah. But I mean, yeah, there are uh, waves where it's something it becomes more popular, and maybe people aren't talking about Roman. But I mean, it's that roller coaster ride of styles for any kind of pizzeria uh, or any kind of pizza style, I should say. Um, uh, these questions just keep coming in, man. So I hope you got some time. But uh, uh, let's go to the next one in the order here. Um, Ilario Finis says, "Is Roman different than La Pinza?" And I like that because I was, uh, it's. I was looking at that earlier too when I was looking for doing research on Roman style. Pizza kept popping up. Now, pizza is, don't get me wrong, I like pizza as well, but is it different? Um, can they be called the same? Okay, so let's say the pizza, the style of pizza. First of all, the pizza that we see today is not the real pizza that was an ancient pizza in Italy, main with ancient grain. So, of course, the rice flour and then uh, the soy flour is not an ancient grain because we had those flowers after the the the, 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 the second world war so it's right. not ancient right so it's not a real product it's a new product that came like i don't know like seven years ago perhaps now if people want to buy and want to work with that kind of flour everybody's free i can reach the same result of the pinza romana the new pinza romana using a double zero there are there, there is like a, a little trick that you we can do and we can make a super light pizza like the pizza with a double zero flour. So it's easy mm -hmm. to have the same product. What's pizza? Pizza is like a mini pala. You bake directly on the stone of your oven with a different temperature like the, the, the Roma style pizza in Tegliola Romana, but still is a great product. So, But it's I mean, different again. You like, yeah, it's, it's different. It's totally different. It's totally different. One hundred percent. Okay. Like a mini pala. It's all. It's very. It's more close to the bread <laughs> taste than to the pizza taste. If you tell me you like more pala or pizza and teglia, I say pizza and teglia. Okay, because mm. pizza and teglia is more pizza. Pala is more bread. Pizza is more bread. So I'm for pizza, I'm for Teglia Romana, but I can show, I can teach all the different styles without problem. Oh, that's you. Okay. Right. That's my that's my taste. Okay. Well, I mean, again, it's it's one of those things where it's and this is this is pizza. Uh, when I was able to visit a pizzeria in uh, in Wisconsin, Di Carlo's, or oh no, that's not the name. Anyway. Um, but, yeah, I, I, like you said, it's a completely different style. And I like how you said what you were saying, Integlia, I mean, for those who might not know, means in a pan. Pan, yeah, right? Correct. So any kind of pizza made in a pan is more pizza. If it's made on a peel, it tends to have some a little more bread-like characteristics. It's not bread, but it's, no, it has... Yeah, if you bake on the stone, in this case, we are baking the pizza la pala and pizza directly on the stone. Okay, So in this case, the taste... It's going to be like bread. Pizza bread, okay. and tea, which is tea, is the pan, okay, with the tray. The taste 
is pizza 100%, but because we use a different technique to bake the pizza. Okay, the percentage of the, the, the oven is different. It's totally different. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, well, thank you, Ilario. Um, that's a great question. Uh, it was something that it was weighing on my mind this morning, too. Uh, we got we got some more. I, I love it, guys. Keep bringing these questions on. So we're going to jump right off to the next one. Uh, Abdullah, I'm not even going to say that because I will get it wrong. What type of flour for Roman pizza if we don't have double zero flour in the market? Another question that I had for you. Um, they have access to AP flour at 11.7% protein. He mixes it with bread flour to reach the 12%. Um, he wants to know yeah. what he can do if they don't have access to zero double zero. What are some Manitoba. substitutions you can make? Mix Manitoba with a weak flour, like a 50-50%. So Manitoba can be over 400W, 420W, 50%, plus a 50% of a weak flour. Slide by two, okay, divide by two, and then you have like a 300, 320W, and we can already make a nice Roma style pizza. Now, the problem is uh, that at home, you don't have enough heat with your regular mm -hmm. room, okay? Because uh, to bake a Roma style, you need the 300 Celsius degrees at least, because we go between 300 to 320 Celsius degrees. So it's impossible to bake with a normal oven that you have at home a Roma style pizza. I'm sorry, but we can. You can make a nice bread, you can make everything you want, you can make a fried calzone, a fried pizza, and like that without problem. If you want to bake a nice product, you need the quality. The heat is an ingredient. So again, buy a small oven professional for your house and make your nice pizza at home without problem. Okay, and then you were saying 300 degrees Celsius, which is, I had to do it. I still can't do the math. That's 572 Fahrenheit. That's so. correct. No less than 572 Fahrenheit, and usually 610 Fahrenheit is a nice temperature to bake okay. a pizza. Okay, and then like you said, I think it, like you said, it, even heat is a, is another ingredient in doing Roman because you need to have that heat. heat the, the heat makes the product, okay? I can use my dough. Okay, 80% hydro, like uh, 120 hours fermentation or less, doesn't matter. I can make uh, four different products with the same dough. Four different products, because the heat make the product. You want to bake a Neapolitan pizza, 450, 500 uh, Celsius degrees that you have Neapolitan. You want to bake Roman, it's going to be 315 Celsius degrees. You want to bake uh, like a pala. It's going to be 275 Celsius degrees. So it's always different, the temperature. But not only the temperature, we have the top and the bottom that we have to control, right? Because if you bake a round pizza, usually the heat comes from the top of your oven. If you bake yeah. a pizza, usually we have a 70% of the power of the heat to the bottom, and then 30% on the top. So in this case, with the electric oven, new generation, smart oven, we can control the temperature and we can make everything we want. Okay. Well, again, it's it's one of those factors, like you said, use one ingredient or one dough product, different of or different temperatures, you can get different uh, products. So yeah, absolutely. I love that. The heat makes the product. That's I'm gonna make a t-shirt that says that. The heat makes yeah. the product. I might share the I might share the funds with you. So, um, all right. Well, we do have uh, some more questions. Again, guys, keep them coming in because uh, I have a lot of the questions I was going to ask you guys are asking. So, uh, and you, there are some that I haven't had. But um, let's say uh, uh, Shane Oates. He wants, and this is uh, soup Nazi. I like that. <laughs> he says, and I have thought about this too. And this is a great question, Shane. With all the travel restrictions going on, have you given any consideration uh, consideration to offering online classes Roman style? Now, this I, is something that I finished one hour ago with Russia. Actually, I give class uh, to Russia, Latin America, Canada, USA, everywhere, online, everywhere. Well, and then and that's what I was looking. To, uh, I mean, you kind of jumped in last second for me here. You really. Uh, you helped out, but I mean, it's. It, I was thinking, you know, if there's a way for you to do a demo with us, we didn't have time to set that up. But I mean, yeah, I mean, it seems like you guys have already mastered that. So this is all at RomanPizzaAcademy.com, right? You can sign By up way, for the. Yeah, that's true. By the way, online is tricky. It's not easy, okay? Because uh, making dough, for example, I was using today this morning, like uh, I told you one hour ago, uh, Russian equipments. 
So mm -hmm. Taekwondo is like to learn a new language, right? So you have to speak the language of the Do. Now, professional, if you are a professional, you should make Do with everything you have. So I make the 80% the, the Hydro Do, like a Roma style, with the Hobart machine, the planetary mixer. People say it's impossible. Again, nothing is impossible. We can do everything we want, but I recommend always to have the right equipment to make your job easier. Mm -hmm. Well, that is that is uh, another question that I thought of um, about that as well, and you've kind of touched on it a couple times. So the right equipment is key, obviously. You can do anything as long yeah. as you have the right equipment. Um, so, I, I mean, it's great. And it, there's a little... There's just probably a little drawback to doing virtual because you're not hands on with somebody like yourself where you can come up and smack their hands and say, no, you're not doing it right. But I mean, they just kind of have to watch and they have to mimic it at their restaurant or something like that. But uh, I mean, it's, it's, uh, we all have to adapt. This is why we're doing all these virtual live chats anyway. So I'm glad that you guys uh, are able to do that. And this is in the uh, you can find it in the training courses, I, I would assume, um, on the website up here. I'm trying to pull it up here real quick. Uh, there you go. So our courses. Yeah. I love that group course. Intermediate, yeah. full immersion. That's the one I want, man. Give me four days down there. That's the so. best one. The four days. I mean, I can give you in four days the knowledge like of a, a five years old uh, Roman <laughs> type of player. So you're going to say five but, years old. You know, mistakes in just four days is going to be a nice touch. And uh, I recommend the four days one hundred percent. Shane, I do see your other question, and that is something else I wanted to talk to uh, ask uh, Massimo myself. So I'll get to that. But uh, no, you, I mean you're absolutely right. It's um, I I got uh, kind of a quick lesson from you in Roman style, and then I went and tried to make my own, and uh, it was okay. And I showed it to you, and you're like, "It's okay. I I know it's just okay." Here's you know, what, why. <laughs> you know why. Here's many, many I got. Uh, People many times ask me, can you give me the recipe to make your pizza? I mean, a recipe is just a recipe. It's not the, the real product, right? The real right. product is when you go to the place or you know everything about the place where people are going to make the pizza. Okay? So if you tell me that you are going to bake pizza in, uh, for example, Lyon, Mexico, okay, with the... Uh, humidity, which is uh, 15%, I'm going to change everything of my recipe. So, mm -hmm. again, recipe is just a recipe. But then, okay. if you want to make perfection, if you want to make a nice product, you have to study so many things that you have no idea. Not only the weather, not only the temperature, but yeah. the taste of your customer, too. So you have to study the market, you have to study everything to give a nice product that can represent you and me. So that's that's my goal. So is a, when I open something with my students, it's like it's my place. So when I go to the place, I, I try to study the market, I try to study the weather, I try to study the water that I'm going to use, everything. So recipe, just a recipe, is not the real product. Well, again, it's just that, that that roadmap. It doesn't matter. You can have all this stuff on paper. You have to, it's how you execute it in the end. Well, and and then that kind of brings me to this: is that uh, you just mentioned to me? I, I was never super happy with this. You know, it was my first attempt. But uh, what you did mention, it's, it wasn't even the the dough. It's just that the ingredients didn't even come all the way out to the edge. Now, because it's usually sold by the square, right? Uh, for the most part, you said that's what people want. Otherwise, everybody's going to buy the middle section and nobody's yeah. going to eat the crust. So is that one one of the typical uh, aspects of Roman style is that the, the, the ingredients go, go all the way to the edge? If you go to, back to the pizza, I, I tell you that uh, we have three colors with the pizza, right? When you see the crust, yep. we have three colors. We have the black, we have the gold, and we have the white. Correct or not? Mm -hmm. Right? When they are there, black, yes. When it's black, it's proof. When it's gold, it's ferment. When it's white, it's over-fermented. So I'm going to ask you, what color do you see in your pizza? 
I see a little bit. Of, I see a little bit of gold. I, honestly, I see kind of all three of them. I don't know how. <laughs> That's exactly. Like I said, I, I'm a novice at that. So they, I can see a little bit of gold. There's some black spots and there's some spots that need more color. In, in my opinion, I'm judging my own work. Yeah. Um, Two years ago, somebody told me, if you want to know something about the pizza that you're going to eat, ask the W to the pizza maker. Okay, because if the W is over 300, it's going to be a fermented pizza. But it's easier than that. You don't need to ask nothing. Just check the color of the crust. Checking the oh. color, you already know if it's proof, overproofed, or fermented. So it's easy. I, I really like that. And I'm actually uh, doing real quick. I'm just kind of writing these things down so that I know exactly where we can chop all this good information up. But uh, um, yeah, I. That actually, I did have another question about W too, but we might get to that in a minute because you pretty much just said that the W doesn't necessarily matter. Look, judge it with your you can you can judge it with your eyeballs, and it does matter. W, but I mean, W is super important to make a nice product. In my case, is uh, one hundred percent the most important thing because uh, with a W over three hundred, I can ferment, right? Now, of course, changing flowers, change timing, temperature. Yeah way do you work with the mixer so again it's not easy i like to be okay. pure 100 with the flower so make me my work clean and easy Let's well I, I i'm going to come back to Ed talking about the w because I'm, i've competed in italy um I've, I've taken the pizza team there i know mostly just kind of manage uh but i've done it a couple times and it like you said it is very important it's the one thing that they usually ask about when they're judging you, but uh, we'll get back to that. I did want to get back to Shane's questions real quick. Um, yeah. uh, he did have a follow up on this. Uh, he par bakes his crust and then he tops and cook it about seventy percent to the finished bake once sold. Um, I was that one of the questions I had is I'd seen and maybe coming off of pizza as well. But uh, do Romans should you par bake your Roman style pizza no. dough or not? Mm, no. Okay. No. It's like to make a risotto. When you make a risotto, you have 16, 18 minutes cooking a risotto, right? So you don't perbake the risotto because you lose everything. I like to bake 100% my base, like a Roma style pizza, and then that's the canva where you can put all the ingredients and then you can finish in just two minutes or three minutes with the toppings. So never perbake the, the Roma style pizza. You have to finish the Roma style pizza 100%. Okay. Now, are there any tricks for that? Because sometimes it tends to be people get scared because it tends to be a little bit of thicker dough, but there's a lot of air in there, right? So it's not like it's a, a thick Again, mat. It, so there is a formula to find out what's the uh, weight of your dough bowl. Okay. So let's say that the standard size of the uh, uh, blue steel pan is a 60 by 40. So the formula to find out the weight of your dough bowl is going to be the area, right? The area of the rectangular. So it's going to be 60 multiplied by 40 is 2,400 divided by 2. You have 1,200 grams. To the 1,200 grams, you can add the rest to 20%. So let's say that the minimum weight of the doubles can be 800 grams if you want to make a thin crust, or can be 1 kilo 440 grams if you want to have a thick crust. Now, the thick crust is not heavy because if I show you a slice of mine, which is very big, the weight is nothing. Air. Mm -hmm. So yeah, well, you, how look the pizza? You want to show your technique? Make 1.3, and it's going to be a nice structure. You want a cracker pizza? Super light. It's going to be one kilo, 900 grams. So thin crust, thick crust is the taste of the customers. Very important. Okay, well, we'll try to get all that information. That was a whole lot of math you just threw at me. So I'm just going to say. <laughs> so, yeah, no, we'll definitely uh, uh, try to get that put out. Uh, but, I mean, is it, if somebody wants to figure out kind of this formula, is there somewhere online that they can yeah. either reach you guys? Uh, okay. And I did want to say that uh, Marina, she, she put up here that you can – um, online classes can be booked by calling the office at 888-511-7331. It's in the comments. I'm trying to copy and paste this, but um, just check it out there, guys. Uh, you know, you can find these virtual online classes. And, I mean, are yeah, you finding it because you can only have so many people in a building even before everything happened. Are you finding that the online classes have gained more popularity and you get bigger class sizes? Yeah. 
than, than you used to in person? Usually, yes. I mean, my top was uh, 22 chefs. And uh, yeah, we give classes, uh, individual classes to a big group of uh, students without problem. Awesome. Well, okay, uh, we're going to move on here real quick. Shane, again, thanks for all your interaction. I see your last question. We can post this to uh, um, uh, to Massimo and just kind of see. Uh, we're not really talking about different types of products. We'll, we'll, we'll figure that out. There's a lot of other just fundamentals we want to get into right now, but it is a good question, so we'll make sure we can try to get that answer for you somehow. Again, if anybody wants to get in touch or get some more questions uh, answered, you can email me at brian at pnq.com. I know the folks that I can – get the answers from i'm just a facilitator here guys i'm just trying to make the information happen but uh moving on to another one of my questions or just what a bullet point hydration yeah hi moving on so you you're saying uh earlier on uh, 80 percent plus now i mean that's that's mostly just it's like flour soup how do you i mean what is the lowest hydration that you should actually use for roman style and what is the highest that you've ever used 80% is the, the minimum. Now, 80% 80, okay. is easy to do and to work in a pizza place. If you go over the 80% water, hydro, it's going to be a little bit more complicated, but you can do it. So I can do a 100% hydro dough without problem. But my goal is uh, 80 because it's easier to reach more hour fermentation. So you can reach the 120, 144 without a problem. So when I give classes, usually I like to show different product, like can be a 48, 72, 96, 120. So they can touch and they can try all the different type of fermentation. That's very okay. nice. Now, higher is the fermentation, low, uh, sorry. Yeah, higher is the hydro, lower is the fermentation. So that's make a nice difference, uh, huge difference. So okay, so the higher the the higher the high, um, hydration, the lower the fermentation you you want. And yeah, I, I okay. prefer for some one hundred percent. It's it's easier to work with for a pizza place. Now, if somebody comes to my class and they ask me, I need that dough ready in four hours. Uh, we do that. So that's for you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can again if you can control time and temperature, you can make. When I go to the pizza expo, for example, I don't I don't bring my dough with me. I make the pizza expo, uh, the dough, 15 hours, 14 hours before the demo or the the, the, the first day of the, of the show. And people think it's a 96 hour. It's only a 14 hours. It's nothing. But again, you can push up the temperature, work with a, in a different way with your, with your mixer, and you can make something more sophisticated in less hours. Okay, so... All right. Well, yeah, I would have never. You just gave away the secrets there. We we know you're working with the 14 hour dough, but so that, I mean that's actually well, that's actually it's good because then people, if they have like an emergency, you know, if they can kind of see they're running out of dough, they can make it in advance. It's never right. optimal, but they have an option to get out. So, so um, all right. So the higher hydration, the lower the fermentation time is is what you're saying. That's correct. Um, and so higher, uh, higher is the fermentation less structure of your pizza you're going to have. But the taste is yeah. much better. I don't know right, if you understand right. the... Well, it's, yeah, after a while, it kind of starts yeah. falling back in on itself, but it's our, it's created those gluten strands. It's giving you that flavor. There's that optimal window for everything where it's just perfect. We call it, you know, Goldilocks. That's correct. Um, all right. Well, that's, I mean, I was going to say, but what is maybe the highest hydration that you would ever go on... Um, on any kind of Roman style. I mean, uh, where, where's... I mean, I mean 100% hydro for Roman and I reached the 244 hours fermentation. Wow. Okay. So you can actually do 100%. That's basically a one to one ratio of water to flour. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, it kind of brings me to a, a, another um, question. Well, okay. Uh, well, Shane's got another question and he's, he really wants this information. Uh, he, what percentage of Biga do you use? No Biga. For Roma style pizza, I don't like Biga. I'm sorry. I'm against the Biga for pizza al taglio. Totally against the, the Biga. I don't know why oh. people talk about Biga so much today, but I think Roma pizza al taglio is direct. No Biga, I don't want to make bread. Biga make it dry the product. It's completely different. I'm sorry. 
I imagine it's huh. Tuga for Pizza Altaria, 100%. Okay, well, Shane, uh, no bigger for you. Absolutely. Just playing off his soup Nazi picture there. Okay, that I mean that's great information right there. I mean it's again it's uh, your personal opinion, but your personal opinion you as the pala, lead instructor. If you want to make a pala, let's do bigger. If you want to make pizza al taglio, never do bigger. I'm sorry, I'm against. For pizza al taglio is pure, is direct, and is time and temperature. Okay, time and right. All right, so time and temperature that kind of leads me to this next thing here. Uh, fermentation procedures. Now, you kind of just touched on this the higher the hydration, the longer the fermentation. You're talking about 244 hours. That's insane. Uh, but I mean, uh, so I mean, what is the optimal? Just if you had to give them that one region, what's the optimal? Uh, easy, easy to 80% hydration and how long? It's an easy way to work with a pizza place is a 70 to 96 hour. Okay, so when do we go after the 24 hours? So we start from proofing 12, 24 hours, and then we start fermenting 48 to 96, 120, whatever. So the easy way to make a perfect product, very difficult to compete with, is a 72, 96 hour. That kind of dough, it's easy to work with in your pizza plate, and it's gonna be unique, totally unique. So there is no competition, absolutely. Well, and you were just saying the difference between uh, uh, proofing and fermenting. So yeah. you do like a 12 to 24 hours at like a, a, a room a, temperature bench rest bulk product, ferment? It's a bulk, bulk, bulk product and make the crust more dark, like black. That's proof. Okay. When you go over the 48 hours, then you go with the fermentation and there you need a special flour with more protein and higher W than more than 290 300 W. So over the 290 300 W, you can already ferment your dough. All right. Well, again, yeah, I hope you guys are taking notes like I am. You can see me scribbling furiously at all my <laughs> all my notes. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot of information for everybody to get. So I, I look forward to having you back on again. But um, so 72 to 96 hours, a 12 to 24 um, proof, 72 to 96 ferment, which is it refrigerated, correct? That's correct. Do you you recommend uh, as a bulk ferment and then portion your dough balls the day always, of? Always. No, it's not like New York style. Uh, so just, yeah, the New York style that we make dough balls up and make no. It's not like that. Or the Neapolitan. In our case, we have the bulk fermentation for at least two days, three days, doesn't matter, and then dough balls and everything. All right. Well, and then you so you, you pull it out of the fridge. You don't want to you don't want to ball it cold. Do you want to let it get to room temperature before you ball it? That's the pen. The pen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that's okay. the, the part that you control time and temperature. So okay. you can do everything you want in the way that you want. But we have I mean, you have to study making mistakes, you find the solution. So I may mm -hmm. Mistakes in and in the past, I don't, I don't know how many years that I learned a lot from my mistakes. So, and actually, I'm happy when I do mistakes. That's the best part. So, out of the your comfort zone is the only way to learn something. You know that, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, so, I like that. It's like don't be afraid to make mistakes because that's how no, you're going to learn. Never, never, never. Welcome to the mistake. Well, uh, all right. This is some good information, man. I Okay, so let's, I'm just trying to muscle on through here real quick. I think we did have a, a couple other questions here. Uh, all right, no, I think we're all caught up on that. So now it's it's me time here. So we've talked about the parbake, the ferment, cold or hot, how long. Um, I want to say the best tips for handling a wet dough. Now this is um, when you're when it's coming out now maybe this is the time where you can go show us some dough that's proofing or you wanted to show us some stuff out there in the shop dough ready but uh, uh, when you ask me uh, you know the hydro is so high that we make like a soup that's uh, completely wrong because uh, making the dough again is like uh, to speak a language you no know? so when you use the mixer you should know when is the right moment to add the next ingredient, okay? Because you can over mix and you lose your dough. So today, for example, I was making online a dough with a mixer that I never 
seen before, is in Russia. So I have to study first the mixer to understand how work the mixer. You have to understand how work the mixer, and then you change the timing, the way you put the ingredients. So that's the the way we make dough with a higher percentage of water. So you have to understand the way the revolution that you have with the mixer, the power that comes from the street to your restaurant, so it can be faster, slower, the shape of the bowl, the way is uh, the spiral. There are too many factors that, because I try so many mixers, I, I don't know how many mixers, so many oven, <laughs> gas, electric, and everything, that today I can see something and already can tell you this is the way. The first time I saw a planetary mixer was in uh, Hawaii, and uh, they asked me to make 80% uh, hydro. Was difficult, but I did it. I mean, again, nothing is impossible, but it's for real. It's not easy to work with a planetary mixer, so I always recommend the spiral to make 80% hydro, 100%. Okay, good. That Yeah, that was another question I had right there. Was yeah, so many people stuff. work with the, with the same mixer. I don't, I don't want to say the brand, but everybody's got the same one, which is uh, like four times more expensive than a normal spiral two-speed mixer. So, again... That's on you. If you want to work, if you want to work with a famous brand, work with a famous brand. If you want to save money and to work better, it's done. It's easy. That okay. Is well, and it, well, that's good. And I, and I like how that uh, you know we, we saw the spiral mixer here. Now, now some of this stuff is uh, as far as like working with it. I was asking about since it, it's not it's not soup. I mean that's just an over exaggeration that I had, but it's as far really as it is, it's sticky. It, it it is sticky. So what are the best ways to actually handle that without ruining the integrity of the dough or degassing it? Yeah. Um, I think you. I was showing it right here. You were putting a little bit of flour as you're folding it in. We work uh, with a I mean flour where we make doubles, a lot of flours. Usually, I like to mm -hmm. work with crops, not only for the customer, but because it's very sticky, the dough too. Of course, fermenting. It's normal that the dough is going to be stickier than the normal 65% hydro dough or 60% hydro growth. So it's completely yeah. different. I prefer to use the gloves, vinyl gloves, so it's much easier. So these are what well, I was uh, like uh, seven years old, perhaps. I was well, young. Yeah, that was here. <laughs> I know. I, yeah, I remember this is a this is a good video. I, I watched this over and over again. Uh, but if it's, uh, I mean, as far as like, um, I've heard people say, you know, add uh, either if, if they're not using the gloves, they, they add flour to their hands or maybe oil to their hands. Uh, the best tip you have is use gloves, um, which is uh, right now is even better than ever because everybody should be using gloves regardless. <laughs> You know that it was like uh, one hour per day cleaning my hands. No, I, this, uh, dough, I, I hate it, so I prefer the gloves. <laughs> but I'm um, okay. So, but I mean, it actually. I mean, you, you did actually add a little bit of flour, so it yeah. does release a little bit easier. Yes, um, yes. That's not detrimental to adding a little bit of like a dusting flour when yeah. you're folding it. That's correct. Um, and. I mean, and I just, I watch these videos and I'm in awe of just how you guys can, I mean, I just don't even want to go back to this, man. This is um, just kind of the way, insane. The, way we cut the dough and the dough will give that, more or less hours to the dough bowls to proof. So once again, right. controlling time temperature in the dough bowl too. So the way we roll and we make the dough bowls, we can give 24 hours or we can give less, 15 hours. So that's on you. But I teach the way to control the time of the doubles too, because that's the way we have to do the class. Yeah. And well, and, and, well, and like I said, I was just, I'm amazed that it, just, it is pretty much when you lift it up, you got to move quick, but you got to move gentle and smooth. Otherwise, you can really t t tear apart a dough. Because what you're yeah. trying to do is uh, um, maintain all that gas inside of it. Otherwise, yeah. you've lost the whole point of it. So. Every single step, we have to respect the dough. Every single step. Every time I, sp I speak with um, my students, I, I say, like, uh, work with the dough like it was a, a, a baby, you know? So yep. don't, don't slap the baby. I mean, you have to be very gentle. <laughs> you 
I mean, don't slap the. I know. I get it. I, I always call them dough babies too. That's because it, I've been taught you know, that early on from a lot, uh, a lot of the, my mentors is that it's a living organism. Don't smack it around. No. <laughs> All right. Well, um, so the best tips for handling dough is just, uh, I say, I should say, I said wet dough, but like a wetter dough is like have some gloves on. We've covered the lowest hydration. Um, so uh, we also covered, I guess, uh, the mix of Roman style or uh, flour types for Roman style, if you can't get your hands on double zero. So uh, I want to move on to something that I hate talking about, and I've been trying to move out of this, but maybe I'm going to go back there anyway. Um, how has kind of COVID affected the Roman style pizza? Um, as far as like displays, a lot of times it would be out there on display. You know what I mean? Um, obviously you don't want food sitting out there in public. It's got to be made to order. So can you tell us maybe a little bit about how that's kind of this situation has changed the future of Roman style or how it's presented? Pizza business doing great with the, with the COVID or not. Uh, thanks God. So we are happy. So now I think is the time of the small uh, business. No? So. Roma style pizzeria is always was a, a, like a small pizzeria, and uh, I think for that reason is growing a lot. Just last week, I gave class to eleven students, so I mean it's pretty busy in the the, the, the calendar of the Roma style uh, uh, academy, and uh, it's growing a lot. Now you say, you just say that uh, the pizza is on the display and everything. That's true. And uh, actually, the last pizzeria that I opened in Santa Barbara is like a new concept, uh, which is create your own pizza al taglio. So in our case, it's going to be much easier than, uh, for example, place pizza that they are baking the pizza in the moment. In our case, like in Santa Barbara, uh, Noemi is the pizzeria. <laughs> 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 They're great. So they have already all the pizza bases ready, right? So they take the individual pizza Romana and then on the pizza display, they don't have the pizzas, they have the toppings, okay? So take your pizza, the three slices or the individual pizza size, which is uh, 20 centimeter by 30 centimeter, more or less like this one, individual, like three slices, and the customer can choose all the ingredients. And then we finish the pizza can be a conveyor oven, so 60 seconds, or can be a small deck, super fast. And that's the perfect way to work with COVID or without. So that's a different way to sell the Roma style pizza. And I think it's gonna be the future of the Roma style pizza. Then there is well, another I... option. Oh, okay, go ahead. Uh, which is a fancy way. So I made a few pictures many um, a few days ago. Uh, of a, like uh, it's like a Roma style pizza, but more like tapas. So it's more gourmet. So in this case, it's a closed kitchen where you have a menu, and we can give you a beautiful product like a full restaurant. So that's another way to give the Roma style pizza in a different kit. So right, well, it's not, there is always different option. Is to us decide the way we give it to the, our customer our product. Well, yeah, and it sounds. I mean, it's kind of that fast casual, but it's. I mean, even if you go to you know any kind of sandwich sub shop, they have the ingredients there. But I mean, this is less right. that those pizzas are sitting out there. You're reheating them. Um, I'd go to a fast casual Roman shop. I mean, if we had to term it as something, I would say that's a fast casual model. But um, yeah, I, all right. So those are great ideas right there for anybody who's does Roman style or is thinking about opening a Roman style. Um, I did want to. I almost. Oh, but okay. There is another option because I already opened uh, places in uh, Chile and Brazil, so they have a central kitchen, can be like a two thousand square feet place where they bake all the shell, all the pizza, okay, of the Roman style pizza, and then they have very small pizzerias uh, can be like in the food court uh, of uh, your preferred mall okay and then they receive a baked pizza when they can finish with the topping so in this case again oh. this is going to be the future in usa why because we need a place where the rent is not so expensive because it's not a premium 
location, right? But then in the premium location, we're going to take like a 300 square feet, 400 square feet. So the rent is going to is, is not crazy. So we can sell the pizza done and we can finish that pizza in that place. So with one lab, with one central kitchen, you can send pizzas to like, I don't know, five, six different small locations. Again, this is a perfect uh, solution for COVID or not. Okay. Well, I mean, this is great. I mean, this is all information that people need to, and even if it's not something they want to do, they can take bits of this and actually adapt it to their business. Now, I did have a couple, two, uh, two things. I do want you to show me this dough, but I wanted to ask you real quick because this is something that we were talking about right before. Uh, is the evolution of, um, I mean, I mean, you're, the learning is never done. So this is all about the evolution of Roman style dough. And I actually just did make that graphic, but I apparently didn't save. But you had showed me, I showed you a recipe that you submitted quite a few years ago. And you said, no, that's not what we do anymore. And I'm going to show that. I am going to put you on display, my friend. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, I want to get to, even this was from a couple years ago. So what is uh, what is kind of the evolution of Roman style been just even since this? And here, I'm, I got it right now. So. This is uh, this is a, a recipe that's submitted by you for PMQ, uh, PMQ.com recipe bank. Now, you looked at that crust structure and you said no. Why? Because it's completely wrong. Okay. Completely wrong. Okay. The intestine is wrong. The temperature is wrong. That's my pizza. So I can I can say that. So I mean. <laughs> just... <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Well, no, that's this. I mean, because when I show this to you, I was really shocked by this. And this was like two seconds before we started. And I'm like, oh, OK. But um, so, I mean, this is you, you, we were talking about. Um, I think it comes down to layers versus holes. And uh, it's not, it's a, it's a, that is a cold temperature. I didn't respect uh, all the simple steps of the proof of the, the double and the. Uh, Perhaps the fermentation too was wrong. I mean, I don't remember because this picture is, uh, I don't know, perhaps five years old, four or five years old, I don't remember. But again, everything is wrong. Except okay. the pumpkin and the, the recipe, which is very nice. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Aside from everything else, uh, you know, the yeah. So, okay, but I mean, Roman style is, is uh, it's 90% dough. So it, it, the style of dough, right? The toppings, you know, you have to follow certain that's, that's like maybe for flavors. Everybody. That's the short part. Oh. When they try the crust and they see the lightness, the crispiness, that's a nice pizza. So this is what we were getting to, the evolution of Roman style, is that this was so uh, something that you had sent me. And you were talking about, like you said, layers versus holes. And I didn't notice it until you actually mentioned it to me. And I want to remove that tag there so people can see it. But um, this one is, uh, we got to, because this one is pala. This one is pizza la pala. So you can, if you can see, you have layers. You see? Yeah, then, they're layers yeah. versus the holes. And then the color. Yeah. You can see the color of your dough is like silver. Is, is, I don't know. Is a can almost can speak to you. Mm. Okay, so that one is a respect for every single step from the bulk fermentation and the proof of your dough. Bowl. This one is a pizza and paella. Again is a 100% is 100% respect of the timing, temperature, everything, everything, everything. Not only when the dough is ready, but since the beginning, respecting the temperature when we keep our flour in our restaurant. So every single step is important to have this product. Well, and I think this really kind of illustrates what you were talking about, the layers versus the holes. You can see it. It's almost like I just keep equating it to like ocean waves and stuff like that. But I mean, you can see layers. Um, but you can see the brown, the gold crisp on the top, the, the silver in the middle. Um, and this is, I mean, it's a beautiful pizza. And, and, then, and then you have all the benefits of just all the ingredients on top, man. That's that's something I would put into my face hole for sure. And, but, the, uh, and I fight now because I want that all the pizza makers start making something beautiful and different because pizza it must be something more imp important, you know, because it's so difficult to make a perfect product that we have to finish the pizza with perfection to make more important the, our job, our work. Okay, we work for 14 hours per day. So we have to finish our work with perfection so that people can judge and can say, wow, that 
is art. It's not pizza anymore. So everybody work a lot and try to do something nicer. Yeah. Well, all right. So I got two more things. Uh, Shane, he is uh, relentless. He wants to know your favorite books. We'll cover that in a different show. Um, but I, I assume he means favorite books that you learn from as far as pizza making. But the final dough temperature when mixing, uh, he wants to know what the final dough temperature should be for mixing. Uh, but he also has kind of a follow-up. What is the uh, room temperature that you're working with in Miami? Now, I know that also has to do with humidity and, and stuff like that. There's so many factors that go into making a good dough. Give I mean, me two of them. What's the final uh, – best is what's the final dough temperature coming out of the mixer that you're looking for? That's the best. I mean, I <laughs> you cannot ask me to give you just the recipe, you know, how to make uh, spaghetti al pomodoro. Okay? It's not that easy. <laughs> The dough is alive, so we can change the final temperature. It's not so easy. Now, what kind of flour do you have? What kind of mixer do you have? So we can change the temperature, depending on <laughs> the flour that you have. Because if you give me a flour with soy, it's going to be completely different. If, you, if your W is 400, it's going to be a different temperature. So I cannot give you... You know, 18, uh, 18 degrees, 18 Celsius degrees is, uh, is wrong. Or hey, what? people that ask me, what's the temperature of the, your oven? Okay. It depends. How yeah, many? no, and that's what I'm hearing. So I tell you what, Shane, it sounds like you need to go to Miami and take his class. We've given you as much free info as we can, but um, that is that is kind of a loaded question. Like you said, it depends on so many factors. Yeah, uh uh, so, so when we make it, uh, <laughs> <fair> enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you for being a good sport, Shane. Yeah, and again, you have my email. You can get in touch with me. Um, so, hey, go show us some dough balls real quick. Uh, okay, let's go. Actually, let me put the mask on. Uh, you know. So he's going to – I'm just going to explain to our audience. He's going to walk outside into uh, the area, and he's got to put his mask on. And we're going to lose him for two yeah, seconds, and, and then he will turn on his phone so that we can see some uh, dough growing in the wild. Maybe we can sneak up on it and it ro won't run away. Uh, oh, and Shane says uh, he's in Canada, so we can, you know, kind of parse some uh, times and temps from that. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Yep. All right, there we go. Okay. So I'm coming. Here we go. So this is Richard. I'm oh, sorry. There, there you go. go. <laughs> Hello. And uh, now let me work with my with my stuff over here. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, we should have got to this sooner, but um, oh, I didn't realize you were that set up, my friend. Holy, very good. Okay. So 120 hours for making dough. 120 hours, huh? Just because people say it's too much. <laughs> Let me take the glove. Yeah. And that has uh, 120 hours of fermented dough. That was basically uh, still just kind of left at room temperature. Um, it was proofed for about 12 to 24, correct? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, okay. Double zero flour, no semolina, no spoon brew. Double zero. Why? Because people think that the semolina make the product crispier, right? But why to use semolina when we have already 16% protein in our dough? That make already the, your product crispy. So no semolina because it's going to be more bread. So, look here. Very nice. So that's a double zero underneath and double zero on top, just yeah, for, this for is dusting. Double, this is actually the same flour that I made the dough, the same one. So it's a protein is a 15.5 and uh, the W is a 360 W. Okay, so. Look 
get these, Ryan. How heavy are those? Can you see? Yeah, I can see all of the air. It... This is a perfect pillow over here. <laughs> <laughs> now, how heavy? How heavy are those dough balls right there? Those those portions. This one is a one point three. One point three kilos. Yeah. And then, what's the size of the tray? So if Perfect. you're not afraid to make mistakes, you can make a 1.3 kilo like this one, and you can show your technique and the lightness of your product. Or if you prefer, you can make a thin crust, and you can make a 1 kilo or less. It can be 850 grams, and you're going to have a super thin pizza. Now, hmm. for example, right now we have the pizza ready, okay? So it's completely equal. Perfect, but we're gonna make the signature once again to respect the dough. Less we touch, better is gonna be the Roma style. So look at this. So you're pushing it around a lot, but you're not breaking any of those bubbles. Open finger. All right, finger spread. Push up, create the volume, create the edge. That's the trick. That's yeah. the way. Finger spread. Yeah. Now um, hey, uh, uh, Peyton, Peyton Smith wonders if he can talk, uh, speak up a little bit. Um, I know you're working from your phone, but. Uh, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Just, you know, it, it, we'll get to this, Peyton. You can rewatch it or we'll, we'll have all this information in, in uh, other videos as well. So. Um, yeah, it's easy. I, I, I tell you what, I will lean back from my microphone so I'm not yelling so you can turn up the volume. There we go. Okay. I don't know if I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Can you repeat? Yeah, I can hear you. I was just saying that they wanted you to speak up a little bit. So we have a 1.3 kilo dough ball and yeah. a 60 by 40 centimeter tray. That's correct. And that's going to give us a thinner crust, correct? Can be a thinner crust if you make one kilo double or 900 grams double without problem. Actually, there is a very nice pizza place in uh, in New York. It is uh, in Chelsea Market, Filaga. Uh, I think Francesco, the owner, is making 850 grams. So it's super thin, the crust. That's a very, mm. very nice product. Okay. So that's a very nice place if you want to try a thin, thin crust. If you want to bake uh, with me this pizza... Ryan? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, I'm listening. <laughs> okay, so we can bake this pizza together. So I can, show, I can show you the final product. So this one is the first one. Oh, wow. I did not know he was going to do this. Otherwise, I would have started this earlier, guys. But uh, this is awesome. Okay. And this one is going to be the second one. Because I prefer to bake two pizzas at the same time than just one. Okay. That's for the distribution of the heat inside the oven. So, so, so you like to bake two at a time just to kind of keep the heat distribution that's even. That's correct. That's correct. And I prefer to bake only two, no more than two tray for time. That's because in USA we have only 220 power. It's not like in, in, <laughs> in Italy. No, it's true. It's true. Right. So no. I, I, enough power in US to bake a three or four tray. So I prefer always the quality of the product to the quantity, no? Yes. So yeah, there. absolutely. Again, we create the bubbles, the lightness. Now, now I don't want to, you know, relate this to pizza, but it's, it's, it's a lot of the handling is very similar um, yeah, as far as... Uh, it's, again, it's the respect for the integrity of the of the gas inside of the dough. That's, that's what you're that's going correct. for. But you know what? I teach I teach the way to make a perfect signature too to my students. So it's the way they touch the dough is so important that for me, I mean, it's like a time and temperature. The way we touch the dough is equally important. So you have yeah. to learn the right way. Yeah, you have to respect right now, it. And again... 
So you don't want to get the gas out of it because that's actually that's what everybody's been working for while they're fermenting. So it yeah. defeats the purpose. So now we're going to make two different pizzas. I'm going to make a red one and I'm going to make a white one. Oh, <laughs> well, that's pretty cool because that was actually that was another question I had is the styles of yeah. uh, pizzas that they had, styles of Roman pizzas that they had. Is it white versus red? Or is it just about topping? So, all right, I'll let you go on. Continue, sir. Okay, so this one can be a white pizza, so extra virgin olive oil, just like this. Sea salt, Sicilian sea salt. And then we have the fine pulp of tomato. More or less is that 12 ounces of tomato. And then we open. You like doing that? Is it? Well, I was going to say, you you do it by hand. You can get it everywhere you want. You've got the gloves. It's all healthy. But you're trying to, how close to the edge? I, okay. Super important to use the, the hands because with the, with the fingers, I can make these white lines where the dough can breathe. So it's super important to use the hands. Oh, so you, so you kind of want those finger trails in there to give the dough some air. Okay. Nice. So, so we pull the corners. We make the holes for the white pizza. Pull the corners of the red one. So pizza doesn't shrink. There we go. Okay. Now we go to the oven. And then I come back to you. Okay. Well, I, I got to say, guys, that I was not, um, honestly, I wasn't expecting this. Uh, we were talked about maybe doing something, uh, some kind of demo, and he was going to show me some shop. But here you go, master class from the lead instructor at the Roman Pizza Academy down in Miami, Florida, soon to be uh, Italy and Spain. So now they're in the oven. What's the temperature of the oven, and how long are they going to bake? Okay, that's a very good question because uh, this oven is the tiny model of the Moretti. I cannot switch, so I'm going to do this. So this one is the small model of Moretti. So the setting that I'm going to use now is 7.4. Many people are going to say is wrong. It's not wrong because I have less heaters in this model. So I'm pushing more the temperature. Set temperature 318 for this oven. And the real one is 315. Now, why the, why the, the oven is a smart, okay? If I push timer, you see the time going down, right? Four minutes, yep. going down. So I need to bake the pizza in two different times. So I'm going to bake the white one for a total of nine minutes and the red one for a total of 10 minutes. Now, if you see, look how interesting is that that the old electric oven, all of them, all the different brands, they work in the same way. The left spot, the left side of the oven, we have more heat than the right one. So for that reason, I put the right, the white pizza to the right side and the red pizza to the left side. Okay, so again, is uh, to understand the temperature of everything, in this case of the oven. Right. Uh, people can say, wow, it's expensive, the power in New York and everything, four kilowatts is nothing. It's not the, the air conditioning, it's four kilowatts. Again, it's not like the conveyor oven, it's only four kilowatts against the 18, 16 kilowatts of the old generation conveyor oven. So again, the new technology is, is a is friend of our business, it's not the enemy. So electricity is going to be, the power is going to be the future. Smart oven is going to be the future 100%. Make everything easier. Now look inside. Can you see the white pizza? 
Yes, yeah, absolutely. We can see some uh, some good uh, bubbling up in there. Now, now, these are both in the same oven, correct? You, yeah. One's on the left and one's on the right? Okay. You see? Or on the same deck, I should say. Okay. In just one deck. Now, okay. the size of the deck usually is for three tray, 60 by 40. But in this case, for the 220 power, I prefer to bake only two pizzas. Okay. Okay. So, a few more seconds, and then we're going to turn the pizza. You can see two minutes. So, that's, yep. that's a very good way you know, to control your time, because I don't need to stay in front of the oven, because you can set the timing, okay? And then, when it's beeping, I know that I need to turn the pizza, <laughs> so I can do other stuff. So, and, and then you... And you were saying that you, you know, obviously closer to the heat vents in those types of ovens, you, you want to put the red the red pizza closer to the heat source. That's correct. Versus the white because it has more it well it has more toppings. It has just the sauce on it. But now, for example, if you see the setting, look how mm -hmm. interesting is that, that uh, controlling the the setting of the bottom and the top. For example, I want to bake a bread. I'm gonna put five, one. And the temperature is going to be 230 Celsius degrees. And you can bake a bread. Mm -hmm. you wanna make and, then, and then the, well, the five to one, the, the, the five being the bottom temperature, the five to one ratio, bottom yeah, versus top heat, correct? That's correct. Because I saw pizzerias, they work with smart oven, but with the wrong setting. So be careful because this one, is our goal if you can control the time uh, sorry the, the temperature the setting you're gonna have a better product you don't burn yeah. your pizza your product so for example you want to bake a uh, pizza la pala easy seven three 275 celsius degrees that's it you bake pala 75 <laughs> here we go you want to bake, uh, I don't know, uh, New York style. Again, it's going to be like uh, 275 more or less. And can be, in this case, 9 and 1. 9 the top and 1 the bottom. Okay? Oh, and there we go. So now this is just our, our turnaround to kind of make sure that we get the, the same bake on each side because all ovens, they have different heat spots. So now we are waiting just three minutes for the pizza bianca. And then okay. we have two more minutes for the red one because the red one is uh, 10 minutes total. So again, is uh, easy. A child can make a pizza. Okay, well we, well, well, we got a couple minutes. I was going to ask, uh, you know, what are some of the typical styles and flavors of Roman style? I was going to ask, do they have a red and white? Um, is it uh, certain types of toppings? Crostino. Crostino is a, is a must in Rome. So, uh, I mean, Crostino is the pizza that we bake uh, with all the topping. So you see the, the white pizza, the pizza bianca. Okay, imagine to bake this dough with the mozzarella cheese, uh, sausage, uh, all the toppings that you want, but no tomato sauce. That's called, in, Ita in Italy, crostino. To bake crostino, usually, the setting of the oven is uh, seven the bottom, zero, or one the top. Because, of course, we have mozzarella that can burn faster. So, usually, the top is almost nothing. Now, we can see the white taking a gold color. You yeah, see? look at that. And the red one, you can see all the black spot, the simple sugar caramelizing in our dough. Yeah. That make tastier the pizza. I want that. I, I was going to say I'm getting hungry myself. I'm a bad guy. <laughs> I, I hate you so much. <laughs> So look this. This one can be a sandwich. This one can be an open sandwich, so you can put on top everything you want. It's a perfect camba. The white pizza is just great. You can open a business just making sandwich 
with a focaccia. That's it. So simple, so, you can make your own bread with focaccia, and then you can put the topping in front of your customer. Easy to do. So now so are these ready. I want to show you. I want to show you the white pizza, which is almost ready. Huh? Only 30 seconds. Let me check the red one. Little uh, bubble popping there. And this is a lot of a lot of times, folks. This is also about dough management. And people think you can put pieces in the oven and they'll come out right. No, you have to know the craft. You have one zero. Yeah, you you have to know the timing and the temperatures, and you have to watch. Don't just assume it's going to come out perfect. That's why it's called oven tending and not just oven loading. Now, can you see the color? Yeah, and you can see something the olive oil and uh, it's beautiful. I mean, it, so you, you you can cut that up and make that into a sandwich, and that's just olive oil and Sicilian sea salt right there. Now we wait uh, for this one. We wait uh, uh, seven minutes, eight minutes. So, so when stop smoking, we can cut the pizza. We can make a sandwich. We can make everything we want with this pizza. Okay. Because okay. So you want to wait? It's a mistake to cut the pizza right now. I know that the sound can can be very nice because the people <laughs> like to cut with a roller and listen and you know hear the the, the the sound of the crispy crust. But it's a mistake too because the pizza is still baking. We have the humidity for that reason. We have the cooling rack, okay, that in five minutes is going to change the texture of our pizza. So right now I'm taking out the red one. Okay. Well, and that's, that's like, I like it. Well, I like how you said you have to give it that time. It's like uh, making a good steak. Uh, you don't want to cut it right away. Let it rest a little bit, but you allow on the cooling rack for all that stuff to kind of, it still has to finish baking inside. Now, the sound. Oh, <laughs> is uh, lightly crispy. It's not heavy. Then you want to finish your pizza. Can you use the, the gloves? The color one, this. So, a very nice mozzarella. Okay. So we have the burrata in this case. Just open it. Oh, nice. Up, all over the pizza. Ah, uh, yep. Yeah. Get some of that burrata on there. That's beautiful. Simplicity. So, this one is a, a regina with the burrata cheese, room temperature burrata cheese, not cold. Okay. Like the buffalo mozzarella. Again, we have to respect the products. Like that. More, more, more. The last one too. <laughs> more is better, right? Absolutely. Like that, and then a rain of fresh basil. And this is a classic Italian pizza al taglio alla Romana in just 10 minutes. So again, everybody can do this product. It's not impossible. It's not for uh, just a uh, few people. And then add some, a little more. Uh, everybody. Well, and that's what I love about that. That's technically three ingredients plus a dough. Well, four if you count the olive oil, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's simple. All, all of those ingredients are perfect. <laughs> Yeah, but it's as simple. As simple is better. Less is more. So, all right. So, with white pizza, what are you going to do? Is that just 
it's just done with the olive oil and the sea salt, and you mainly use that as a kind of a kacha for sandwiches. Um, is there that's any the, application I mean, that's the bread. for the white? The bread. When, okay. when the bread is made perfectly, I mean, just put some olive oil and garlic on your piece of bread, and you have the best sandwich of your life. Oh, yeah, right? absolutely. All right, man. Well, Massimo, I, I do appreciate so much of your time. We've gone, uh, this is probably one of the longest we've done. I did not expect that full demonstration. I thought you were going to show me some dough balls. I did not realize that. So we're going to cut this up and we're going to put it out there so everybody can see this. But I look forward to having more conversations with you. Um, it's a pleasure. Uh, if anybody needs to reach out to you, what's the best way to get in touch with you? Is it RomanPizzaAcademy.com? Roman Pizza Academy, yeah. You have the email with Roman Pizza Academy, or you can check in Google. You have telephone, everything. I mean, our team is, is the best, for real. They can understand the all languages. And we have people actually coming from Australia, Europe, Russia, yeah. Latin America, from everywhere. I'm, I'm, for real, for me, it's crazy. I'm so happy, and thank you, everybody. Thank you. Well, no, I definitely, I know you're a busy guy. I know you did a two-hour interview earlier today, so I appreciate your time. Uh, Shane, he says, great show. Uh, thank you so much for your question, Shane. Um, Shane, go ahead and contact me if, we can, uh, if you want to go to uh, RomanPizzaAcademy.com. You can get in touch with uh, Massimo himself. But um, if anybody needs any more information about this or uh, uh, answers, you can email me at Brian at PMQ.com. Or you guys can visit RomanPizzaAcademy.com. It's very easy. I love it when the, the email or the websites are easy. So. Easy, right? <laughs> Me too. Yeah, abs <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> so thanks again. We'll see you guys next time. But I 100% uh, look forward to having Massimo back on the show. It's a great honor. I, actually, once you get um, – I'm going to give you some time because I know you're busy. You're opening up places in uh, Spain and Italy. I'm going to give you some time, but I want to have you back on to let me know what you've learned. Because you've taught us so much, but you're always learning as we've demonstrated. With so great honor. Thank you so much, Ryan. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you. you guys. Uh, we'll see you guys next time on PMQ Live Updates. Bye, guys. I'm still here. You there? No. Nope. You there? I'm still here. All right. So we've ended. We're good. We're off. Come back there.